thinking about storage and um, sort of nifty little tricks and tips on our boat. Exciting, our little box has now had two coats of paint. So now time to get drilling. Good afternoon. Hi. <laughs> so we're at the marina today. You are going to be extremely excited about this week's vlog. Because <laughs> Hayley's going to get crafting again. I know. At least you're not doing any drawing Contain or anything yourself. silly like that, are you? Well, I might decorate it. You're not drawing a horror squirrel on it. <laughs> <laughs> no. So before we start, I must explain to you why Richard has got a massive gash on his head, bless him. So last weekend, um, oh. I was doing some cleaning and I was uh, washing down the canopy windows <laughs> and um, shut the hatch thought Richard had realised because he was up here out the back and um, cleaning the way and then I heard a donk. I was like, well that's weird. So I said, Richard are you alright? There was no answer. So I finished cleaning the window. Like you do, because I was <laughs> on my hands and knees at the time. <laughs> Came back inside and Richard had a flap on his head with blood all coming down his head mm. and he'd done a me, because normally it's me that bangs my head on the hatch and this time Richard did it. So we have put up... Oh, get it. Yeah. Oh, because um, just a, a quick bit of history. We Basically, have this. I have suffered from something called post-concussion syndrome, which is multiple bangs to the head, which leaves you with prolonged concussion, which I suffer for for two years. It's quite debilitating. And I kept banging my head on the hatch when we first got the boat. So I said to Richard, we need something to put across as a... a a visual warning that the hatch is closed because if I keep banging my head I'm going to be really poorly so we've got so this. So we've got this chain that you just literally hang on two hooks across the door so yeah. if you go to the door you go oh ah hatch is shut. Yeah but I didn't put it across so. No I walked straight into it. Um, Oops so anyway. <laughs> gushing out of my head air ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of clean and it just healed itself. I've been putting some cream on it for you, haven't I, bless him? Yeah. Anyway, so he's been wearing a hat a lot so that like he doesn't scare people. So it's getting to that time of year. We've put the chimney back on. And um, a little bit later in this video, we are going to test out our coal cage, which we told you about last time. So no, no, we'll I'm allowed to have the fire on. So, <laughs> um, always like thinking about storage and um, sort of nifty little tricks and tips on our boat. Um, we have a space under here where we are sat, uh, which I'll show you in just a sec. Um, it's a big gap we, and we just tend to bung loads of stuff under there. So we've got like tables under there. We've got some sort of little um, collapsible chairs, our pins. I think there's a bit of extra rope, hammer, all of those sort of things that you want to grab fairly quickly. Just live under there, don't they? Yeah. Um, and I had a cunning plan. So I found somebody on Etsy who basically um, will make a box for you. It was actually wooden planters, but I gave him my measurements and said, will you make a box this size? Cheap as chips, it was like 22 pounds to make this big wooden box. Mm. Yesterday, I put some casters on myself all by myself and now today it's, <laughs> it's um they're still on they are still on um i need to rub it down because it's a bit rough um and then i've got some paint again really cheap obviously always out for a bargain at the moment i'll get it for you this was <laughs> from paint. aldi in their sale obviously because summer's come to an end garden accents cool grey 6.99 for a <laughs> massive tub so i thought i'm having me that so um yeah i give the box a quick sand with a sanding block to remove any rough wood then brush it clean ready for painting then it's time to apply the first coat of paint i'm not worried about primer because i want the box to look rustic after giving it some time to dry we apply a second coat and we're really pleased with the result. 
exciting. Our little box has now had two coats of paint. So now time to get drilling. <laughs> Richard measures and drills the holes and attaches the handle for me. It's going to be really useful for storage. Now the moment of truth to see if my measuring was right and it fits. The moment of truth. Okay. Yay! It's not bad. It's alright. <laughs> In a previous vlog, we revealed our coal cage. The temperature's now dropped, so we put it to the test. A device designed to reduce the amount of coal you use in your fire, which should ultimately save you money. Okay, so it's <laughs> 20 to 8 in the evening. It's dark now, because obviously winter's drawing in. Winter's coming. Winter's coming, John Snow. And <laughs> we're going to try out this coal cage. And um, we've got some foraged kindling. <laughs> we don't know there. what it's going to do. And we've never lit a fire this way before. So if all goes horribly wrong, we do apologise. Um, yeah, normally. I... Yeah, but don't know unless you try, do you? So we're going to give it some... a go. Right, so Richard's placed the kindling already right at the... Bottom. It's all stacked up. So there's sticks. Yeah. They're actually sticks that we collected last year, aren't they? They were last year's sticks. Yeah. Seasoned. Seasoned sticks. <laughs> oh yeah, we do it right here. I doubt it. <laughs> right, go for it, Richard. So, so there's a few coal. little bits of coal in there. Little bits. Mm -hmm. We'll just put a few in. Just two, shall we? Yeah, it's not that cold, but... We want to give it a go, so. Just leave two in there for now. Because we want to get it sort so of going a, fire a bit. Lighter in there. Yeah, in the middle. So right in the middle at the bottom of the twigs, put a fire lighter in. There, look. Ooh. Hoping that the twiggies burn well. Sound crackly, so hopefully. Right, we'll come back to it in a minute. So we're gonna let it burn like this. Hopefully it'll burn a bit more. The two bits of coal should drop down into a nice ash bed and it'll be nice and hot and then we'll pile on a load more coal and see what happens. Okay. So just from those few sticks and literally two coals, you can see now our stove fans going. So that means that the base plate on the stove fan has hit 50 degrees already. And that is not quite 10 minutes. Okay, so we're almost ready now because that flame's starting to die down. But if you look on this side, I don't know if you'll see, it's really hot and orange. And there's just a blue flame over the top of it. Yeah. And that's, that's perfect. These ones will die down so shortly. But I mean, we can start stacking up a load of coal on the top of that now. Yeah. And it's hot enough and the coal will then take because those two bits we've put in are starting to go so we'll put some more on and we'll see what happens okay <laughs> this is where it all goes mad all spits out and we get burnt <laughs> the good thing is with this cage they don't just drop out everywhere i know you've so. got a container almost to put them in haven't you yeah they just sort of fall in place, whereas before they would fall all over the fireplace, wouldn't they? Yeah. And then there's a little one there. Literally, that would probably do. It will look like it's going to go out. <laughs> but we'll just leave that now, get that going a bit more. And you leave the door just ajar a little bit. At the moment, you? yeah, so the jar, the, these are wide open and I'll just leave the door to help that flow. Once that coal's going, we can shut the door. Okay. But that coal should sort of pick up soon and another sort of 10, 15 minutes and that'll all be going. Mm -hmm. 
You can just see a flame now coming through the middle where the coal's starting to catch on the bottom. So another few minutes and that'll be roaring away again. Oh, so success so far. I think what we will do is we'll leave this going and uh, we'll update you in the morning. So it's the next morning. <laughs> uh, tested out the uh, fire last night. Um, and mm. it was all right, it was okay. Um, it was about 21 degrees in here, is that right? Yeah, yeah. it stayed at 21 all night. Yeah, I quite liked it. I thought it was quite nice and cosy without being a <laughs> Swedish sauna, which is how Richard normally likes the boat. Yeah. <laughs> so for you me... You sit in your shorts, don't you, and watch the telly and <laughs> snow outside. So for me, um, I quite liked it. Um, it wasn't that cold last night, so it doesn't get as hot, does it? It definitely doesn't get as oh, hot. Oh, the fireplace, no, it doesn't get as roasting as it does when we've had it on before. Yeah, so... Pretty much. From a budget point of view, we did use a lot less coal. So we would say our verdict would be, if you have central heating anyway, and then you have your fire yeah. on just for like that little extra bit of sort of warmth and coziness and it's perfect. Um, I think if your fire, if you had a wide beam and your fire was your only source of heating, I don't think it would get, no, get you'd, hot you'd, enough. You'd freeze. Yeah. Yeah. A narrow boat for money saving, I think it's still possible, well, depending on the configuration. So our friends yeah. have got a narrow boat and they're, fire is right down the far end of their boat so basically the heat pushes all the way along the length of their boat so I think for money saving if you've got that type of configuration on a narrow boat quite open plan it probably would work. Might do, might do. Yeah. I know for some it does because yeah. people have written on there that yeah. it does but no so, we, but, we um, couldn't. No but for you know but for money saving and for budgeting and for using a little bit less coal um, if it's not your only source of heating, I think it's quite good. It did keep going all night. It did, yeah. And the central heating went off really early anyway because it warmed up in here, didn't it? Yeah. So that did switch off and it didn't come back on in the morning. No. So that cage did keep it hot all night. So as like a back burner, it, yeah. it does. Um, I so think we'd have to wait till it gets really cold. Really cold to see how it goes. And then see if mm. we go... Get that out <laughs> and shove them more in there. But for but, £20 and postage, I guess it's probably worth a try if you oh think it is, yeah, it's a neat work. little device. I mean, even if it took you into the start of winter and then tailed off at the end of winter, it still has saved you money. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, that's that's our point of view. So, that's us, all about <laughs> fires and wood and a bit more crafting. And that's roasting in it. And that's really warm it's in 20, here today. Yeah, it's 22 two and a half degrees. degrees. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a grey day out in the marina, but it's, nice, it's cool, warming yeah. up, so... Sun's coming. You know what to do. Do you know what? This week I'm not going to repeat myself. I'm just going to put the little thing down there. Bing, bing, bing. You're going to have to get that right now. Yep. It's just pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.